in June this year, a paper was published which is really important about nitrogen. People get very excited about so-called allotropes of elements, elements that can exist in different forms, graphite and diamond for carbon, O2 and ozone for oxygen. Phosphorus can be red phosphorus, white phosphorus, black phosphorus. But nitrogen has just N2 and a form called black nitrogen, which we gave a video about quite recently, but which only exists at some enormously high pressure and isn't black anyway. But now this paper describes a new form of nitrogen, which is called N6, six nitrogen atoms. They have called it C2H, N6, where C2H is nothing to do about carbon, but describes the shape of this molecule. And you can see it here. It has three nitrogens in a row here, three here, and it's joined by a bond more or less at a right angle. So it's a funny zigzag molecule. So I won't go through the boring explanation, but the C2H means it's got this zigzag shape, refers to the symmetry of the molecule. So why have I got excited about it? There are three reasons. Firstly, new form of nitrogen. Secondly, it uses a technique called matrix isolation that I used to use for my doctorate and for some years afterwards, a low temperature technique. And thirdly, because I thought of an analogy about this molecule, which the authors hadn't. The difficulty of making allotropes of nitrogen is that N2, the common form of nitrogen, has a very strong bond between the two nitrogen atoms. In fact, it's the strongest bond between two atoms that are the same anywhere in the periodic table. And this means that if you make a molecule with nitrogen atoms with different sorts of bonds between them, then it can decompose very easily into N2 molecules with a huge release of energy. It would be explosive. And therefore, it will be very unstable. Although N2 is a stable form, you can make ions. These are negatively charged groups of nitrogen, most famously so-called azide, which consists of three nitrogen atoms in a row with a negative charge. So it's N3 minus. And this can form salts. On our video about the element nitrogen, you can see a demonstration with sodium azide, which decomposes with a big flame when Neil heats it. And the experiment to make N6 uses silver azide, which is a much more explosive compound. We don't have any here in the chemistry department at Nottingham, so I can't show you any. The idea of the experiment to make this was to treat silver azide with either chlorine or bromine gas to convert the silver to silver bromide or silver chloride and to get two azide radicals to stick together to make N6. And the extra electrons from N3 minus transfer to the chlorine or the bromine to make chloride or bromide. The difficulty is how to stabilize the N6 if you make it. And the way this was done was to use solid argon at 10 degrees Kelvin. That's minus 263 Celsius. And the molecules of N6 then get trapped in the solid argon rather like the cherries in the cake. 
that you can see in the photograph. So once it's trapped in the argon at very low temperature, it can't decompose. Is it just like, it's like kind of like frozen in it, like Han Solo yes. in carbonite? Like what? <laughs> I'll, t I'll explain later. <laughs> it's a Star Wars reference. Okay, well, as long as the viewers will understand it. But once the N6 is stuck in the argon, how on earth can you tell it's there? And the answer is that because it has atoms of nitrogen, which vibrate even at 10 Kelvin, they will absorb infrared light and give a characteristic pattern. And argon, because it has only one atom in the molecule cannot vibrate and so it doesn't absorb the infrared light. What you can do is that if you look at the spectra that have been published in their paper, there are quite a few different bands in the spectra. To decide which of the bands belong together, you can shine light onto the argon the light is absorbed by the N6 and so the energy is enough to destroy the molecule and there's only a small amount so the whole apparatus doesn't blow up. But the infrared bands disappear and you can see them going down at the same rate so you know they belong to the same molecule. But you still need a bit more information and the authors did quite a clever experiment in which they used a different isotope of nitrogen. Nitrogen has two types of atoms, the more common one, nitrogen-14, and a rarer form called nitrogen-15 that has an extra neutron. It's chemically identical to nitrogen-14, but it's heavier. And so when it vibrates, it vibrates at a lower frequency because it's heavier. So they used azide, which had one nitrogen 15 and two nitrogen 14. So this bond will vibrate at a different frequency from that one. And you can imagine they can join together like this, or they could join together like that, and so on. So you get more infrared bands, you get more information and then using computer modeling, you can confirm what you've really got. I was very excited by this. When I did matrix isolation, I used isotopes as well. In my case, 13 carbon, but the principle was similar. This experiment gave me great pleasure because it made me nostalgic, but also I could see how the authors were thinking. The team led by Professor Peter Schreiner wondered whether the argon was really necessary to stabilize it. And so they did the experiment again without the argon and froze a thin film of N6. Disappointingly, it's not colored, so there's no nice photo of N6. But you've never seen it. How does that feel? Well, that's the fate of a chemist, you know, you, most of the time you don't don't see your stuff. I mean, let's say you can isolate a white powder and say, this is aspirin. It might as well be 10,000 other things. So we always have to rely on secondary evidence that, you know, from spectroscopy to know what we have. So for me, it's a normal feeling. And uh, in quotes, I have seen it, you know, looking through the little window and saying there is a film and, you know, it doesn't look like anything, but at least I have seen it. The infrared spectrum showed that even without the argon, it was stable even at the temperature of liquid nitrogen, which is 77 Kelvin. So the idea is that potentially you could use this material as a storage of energy, if you like, an explosive. Azides are sometimes used in airbags for cars. Now, I don't think N6 would be used for that, but you could imagine applications where it might be useful. Bombs. I don't think it would be useful for bombs. It's too unstable. You don't want a bomb that is going to go off before you're ready for it to detonate.
As any energetic molecule, highly energetic molecule, you can think of uh, applications, you know, in the extreme case uh, as rocket fuel. So we are now uh, actually riding with a, um, basically with rocket scientists a proposal to our government to develop this, um, you know, scale it up and see what kind of thrust you can generate. And the cool thing about it is you would only generate air, you know, when it uh, ignites and it would do all of this without a flame uh, and without condensation. So it would alleviate a lot of the problems that rockets have nowadays. A second one is uh, to use it as an energy storage material if it can be handled safely. So we're thinking about um, ways of um, embedding it into, uh, you know, for instance, metal organic frameworks um, to stabilize it and then perhaps have, you know, energy released on command from something that again produces only air. That brings me to the thought that I had that Professor Schreiner hadn't had. There is an idea in inorganic chemistry called pseudo-halogens. A halogen, uh, the elements in group 17, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and so on. And pseudo-halogens are groups of atoms which behave in a very similar way to a halogen. They will form salts, so you can imagine that azide can form N3 minus. They can form acids like HCl or HF, and you can get HN3. And therefore, it struck me that N6 is the pseudo analog of chlorine, because you have two of these pseudo halogen groups joined together. So I wrote to Professor Schreiner, who said that he hadn't thought of it, and he didn't think other people had thought of it, and he was very pleased, because otherwise they might have done the experiment first. It also suggests how the research might go next, because nitrogen forms quite an unstable compound, which is NCl3, nitrogen trichloride. So you can imagine having nitrogen triazide N, N3 three times, which would be nitrogen 10. And that would be really quite a nice allotrope. And I think Professor Schreiner is now trying to make that. It will probably be possible to make N10, uh, which uh, is even crazier. My hope is that as they get bigger, they also get more stable uh, because they may become solids and solids tend to be you know, more robust in terms of you know energy release. Um, and let's see where we can go, but that's, that's what we're targeting right now. Professor, I've seen that distinctive shape of N6. What shape would N10 be? It would be an N in the middle with three N3 arms. Or like a like a star with three arms. Yeah, so actually pretty nice. He sent me some really nice pictures of his equipment. He also sent us a nice photo of himself. So I think he should be congratulated on doing a really interesting experiment to make people think. His apparatus is really nicely engineered looks quite similar to the equipment I used. And in fact, Brady will show you a few shots of the equipment that I used to use and is now stored just for old time's sake. Want to work as part of an international team immersed in the world of machine learning, problem solving, distributed systems, software engineering? Today's episode sponsor Jane Street are currently accepting applications for its next round of internships. All sorts of positions for all sorts of people. These are golden opportunities. Your travel and accommodation all taken care of wherever you're from. You could find yourself working at the cutting edge of quantitative trading in places like New York, Hong Kong, London. No finance background necessary, just a curious mind and collaborative spirit. Jane Street focus heavily on creating a great place to work and amazing career opportunities. 
Find out more about what they're doing and how you could be a part of it by checking out the links below.